All right, everybody, welcome back. Hope you had a great lunch. We would love to see photos of where you, what you had or where you went. Um, if you use the hashtag WVGovCon, um, we would love to see those. So please start sending those in, post them on social media. I know this is a little different. You guys normally post like the people you're hanging out with and what we're doing, but we would love to see some of those photos of how you supported local business. So each year at Governor's Conference, we usually do a year in review video. This year's video looks a little bit different, um, but we wanna go ahead and show it to you guys. Although our accomplishments are different this year, we've still had um, some things that have really made me proud to be the leader of this industry. So here we go, let's get started. So last night, as I was preparing for this, I had that video on um, and our six-year-old Robert came in and he said, do you just listen to that song all day long, every day at work? Um, I promise we don't just listen to it all day long here at the tourism office, but I will say even as much as we listen to it, I still get chills every time I see these compilations of the beautiful footage, um, especially when they talk about the great work of all of our partners. So thank you guys. Um, and we're gonna get started with our first afternoon presentation. So I'm excited to have with us today, Katie and Kylie from Meredith. I know you guys have met them before, but they are the great folks who do the work on our travel guide. They represent a number of huge magazine brands. So People, Better Homes and Garden, Real Simple, Southern Living, Travel and Leisure, um, some of the biggest brands out there um, they represent. And so today what they're going to do is they're going to give us some insights from those brands. So we've heard some survey data um, and they have some additional survey data, but they're really able to pull some specific insights um, from their brands from those websites. So Katie and Kylie, thank you guys for joining us. Um, one note I will make, just exciting. Um, I think we sent out an email, so you guys probably know, but our travel guide last year just recently won a big award for best content piece. Um, and Kylie was also named editor of the year. So congratulations to Kylie and welcome ladies. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Um, and bear with me, everybody. I have um, come down with a little bit of a fall cold. So if I have to pause to take a little um, beverage break um, in between, please um, be patient with me. 
I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and then um, I'll introduce Katie here in just a moment. So I'm hoping you all can see that just fine. Um, but first, good? Okay, great. <laughs> well, when we found out that we were able to meet with all of you today and share some of our research and um, learnings from the last few months, we were really, really excited. Um, because while we have been working really closely with uh, the West Virginia tourism team to continue to create content um, for an upcoming special edition vacation guide this year, um, which is actually 100% supported by the state. Um, it's been an incredibly unique time. Uh, we've learned a lot about being flexible, pivoting, staying positive for our travelers who need us now more than ever. Um, and as the begin, the world, you know, kind of begins to heal and starts to find a sense of normalcy, our consumers are more excited than ever to embrace travel again, um, especially those trips that allow them to reconnect with nature and have really safe urban experiences. And, you know, we're thrilled to once again be able to partner with West, West Virginia Tourism to inspire travelers to think of West Virginia as their ideal path to return, um, return to those safe uh, travel experiences. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, Katie Hildman, um, my colleague, is here with me today, and she is going to walk you guys through a little bit more about Meredith as a whole before I dive into the Trends and Predictive Insights report. So Katie. All right, thank you Kylie, thank you Chelsea for the warm introduction. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Katie Hiltman um, with the National Travel Director at Meredith. Um, and some of you may be familiar with Meredith already and I know Chelsea did a great job um, giving you a little, a little bit of insight on, on who we are, but I do wanna do a little bit more background, just so you know exactly where our research and insights are coming from. So Meredith reaches over 135 million consumers every month through our print, our digital, our TV stations, and our custom publishing work. So as Chelsea mentioned, the award-winning West Virginia guide, uh, that's part of that custom, um, that custom publishing work. And then some of our brands, our editorial brands include Travel and Leisure, uh, Parents, Better Homes and Gardens, Southern Living, as previously mentioned. Um, and these really resonate across um, the, the nation. Uh, month after month, day after day, our audience comes to us for inspiration, you know, in all aspects of life. So to better their homes, to better their, um, their cooking skills, to, to better their parenting. And what we all care about today is to, to take those better vacations. And that's really what we like to tap into um, on our side of things. So our impact um, and reach is simply unmatched. We're the number one publishing um, publisher in the US. And we continue to bolster that by investing in our brands and looking for ways to further leverage those, those brands in the industry. Um, as it says here, we now have over 30 magazine brands, 17 station, TV stations, and millions of web views, web, weekly web views. And our brands reach over 80% of all women. So we really, really, that's really our key sweet spot is, is those women and millennials and two out of three, and the people who control two out of the $3 spent on travel. So and our, our key differentiator that I really want to drive home, though, is that our expertise is telling those stories. So we, we take our content, we tell those stories, we engage our audience to our consumers and then our consumers to our brands for that loyalty. So when it comes to um, brands, celebrities have been coming to us for the past several years, really wanting to take their, um, their brands and expand and ex further expand their franchise. So, for example, Aisha Curry, Rachel Ray, uh, Martha Stewart. Uh, the Property Brothers and, and Chip and Joanna Gaines have all come to Meredith in the last uh, three to five years to help expand their, their brands. In fact, Magnolia Journal, the partnership with Chip and Joanna Gaines was the most successful magazine, was most most successful launch in magazine history. So just take a minute to, to take that in because that was about three to four years ago and the most successful launch in magazine history. So just know that that magazine is really still very um, relative and important to, to, for people to build their brand and to resonate with consumers. Um, in fact, we sell a, 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 a subscription nearly every second here at Meredith. Um, and people, 
especially during this time of COVID and staying indoors and being on people's devices a lot, magazines have actually, readership has actually increased 35% um, the time spent with each magazine. So people are really coveting that, that time to the uninterrupted time to step back and engage with our products. Um, and they really feel, especially magazines, bring that trusted content into their homes. Next slide. And then within Meredith, this is where it kind of funnels down to what Kylie and I specifically work in. So we're more on the travel content side of things. And, and this means our partners can leverage the massive reach of Meredith, but still get that really intimate feeling of a boutique agency to, to keep things, um, to keep those relationships nice and close and, and to get that thoughtful service and content creation. We uh, started over um, 30 years ago, um, our first official travel guide in 1993 was with Pure Michigan. I know many of you were on the call or the presentation earlier today with George Zimmerman. He, we worked with him for several, several years and really enjoyed helping to build that brand as he was at the helm of that and, and still love seeing George in person, especially at all the conferences, but it was even nice uh, today to see him virtually for, for a few minutes. Uh, but since then, we've taken that initial guide and we've grown it to more state, state travel guides and other DMOs. And really, again, it's our program span platforms um, and showcase the best in class copy, photography, and design. And it's really more than that too. Like we are, we are investing in, in these partners. We we got you know we get to West Virginia. We're on the ground. We're interviewing um, the the tastemakers, the people who make you know really bring that travel unique travel to West Virginia. And we're really looking forward to to getting back there and and doing that again for 2021. And then the next slide just kind of shows. All the different platforms that we are in. So again, going back to what I said kind of at the beginning, our, our what really sets us apart is our, our storytelling, our, our ability to take content and curate it for, for our audience and really get them engaged, get them excited, inspire them. And yes, we do it in magazines, but we can take that content and no matter what platform we can deliver it. So we also do podcasts, social uh, media, state travel guides I've already mentioned, um, e-newsletters, things like that. So as, as platforms continue to evolve, we will continue to evolve and make sure that our content, our storytelling really gets to the audience wherever they're at. And on that, I'll let Kylie kind of dig into the travel trends that we've gained from this audience that we were able to tap into every day. Awesome, thank you so much, Katie. Um, so, you know, while we know that the exact uh, timing and the sequence of events for life post pandemic is still unknown, um, we certainly know one thing for sure, and that is that the coronavirus has reshaped us as families and as a society. Um, travel looks different state by state, region by region, of course, city to city. Um, but there are certain things that everyone is looking forward to indulging in um, in the coming months and year as we um, look to recover. Um, so those things, of course, are live entertainment and, you know, making up for those canceled or postponed vacations. Um, Meredith editorial brands are continually backed um, and driven by research, as Katie mentioned, and our ongoing reader studies really help us to continue to make sure that we understand where our consumers needs are. Um, with every sort of life phase, life stage, um, and then of course, as we deal uh, with, with things like this. Um, so today we're gonna have a look at just 10, we've narrowed it down to 10 um, travel trends that we were seeing. Some of these we were seeing pre-pandemic, and um, but many of these uh, that were bubbling up then have held on and have really uh, started to take you know, a stronger hold as things have opened back up and we've experienced a little bit more travel in the last couple months. Um, so with that, um, the first one, there's absolutely no surprise here. Uh, we may as well start with road trips, right? Um, we're seeing and expecting to see, uh, you know, road trips continue and, and see that climb in popularity. Um, and with that, what, what we're also seeing, what perhaps is a little bit even more important is that the tolerance for longer drives to get to those desired destinations has increased. So families are not only taking to the road, um, they're staying on the road longer, parents are working uh, from wherever they land. And with remote instruction in place uh, in many areas of the country, we have now expect people to embrace teaching their kids from wherever they are as well. Um, so in a recent you know, uh, survey, of course, amongst parents, 66% uh, of Meredith families that are planning a vacation in 2020 want experiences that they can share with their family and friends. So despite the fact that we are in the middle of the pandemic, they are 
still looking to travel with those within their like safety net and their safe circle. Um, and then of course, 67%, which is not far off of that, um, continue to plan to take additional road trips in the next couple of years. Really important to note because, you know, this is a trend that will hold on, I think for a little while, um, and something that was taking hold, uh, a little bit before, uh, before we were sort of, um, uh, you know, dealing with COVID <clears throat> in such a big way. Um, more outdoors for everything. So while this was pulled from a study earlier this summer, this is a great way to sum up, sum up um, the new consumer mindset. Uh, overall, we continue to expect to see more, you know, multi-season backyard barbecues, um, outdoor movies, and as long as weather holds out, uh, new takes on outdoor markets. And then, of course, investing in vacations that get our families into more remote and nature driven areas. Um, so stargazing was still a really extremely popular thing this summer um, and will continue to be so. And so 51% of our Meredith readers say that they're more likely to take those trips um, to the mountains or to coastal areas in future travel due to the coronavirus. Certainly um, they're looking for the wide open spaces that are, that are far more um, safe and uh, for their families. So one of the things um, I just sat on an editor in chief call uh, a couple of weeks ago where we were talking strictly about how our content has shifted um, from brand to brand. And one thing uh, that is 100 um, percent consistent is that uh, we are really trying to inspire that, that traveler to, to get back on the road and to feel really comfortable. And um, the way that we're able to do that is really by showcasing majestic landscapes and beautiful photo essays and, and really bring um, bring that experience to them in a big immersive way, visual, big visual way. Um, if uh, that traveler is, is you know, in essence right now, just an arm, armchair traveler, but to then inspire them to file that away and, and want to go see those uh, amazing uh, views and vistas um, in, in coming months. A desire for getaway destinations, uh, which offers, you know, natural beauty, outdoor activities for kids, fewer crowds and greater control over surface areas has boosted uh, the interest in RVs, uh, camping, cabin rentals, campgrounds. And interestingly enough, we're not seeing that start to decline yet, even though the seasons are starting to change. So I think um, the investment in the RV and into more mobile travel has um, absolutely uh, found its home and, and will likely continue uh, for, for quite some time. In fact, uh, we had several editors um, at Meredith that, that grabbed RVs and took off and um, have been working from the road as well. So that was a safe way for them to um, get out on the road and experience and kind of have a hybrid uh, exploration time uh, while they're able to continue producing and publishing. We've also seen a surge in uh, small town destinations, of course. Um, local brands have become more popular this summer and we expect that to continue through the holiday season and beyond. Um, that's definitely uh, a little bit of, as a result of a feeling of patriotism, we think, you know, uh, neighbors helping neighbors get back to work, um, boosting preferences, you know, for that made in America um, or just down the street kind of neighborhood items. So people we're finding are embracing those artisan goods in support of their small businesses now more than ever. Um, and in fact, the latest Meredith COVID-19 tracking study, 70% of Meredith women are supporting, supporting local businesses as a way to help others during uh, the coronavirus. And certainly 56% of our readers say that they're more likely to take these trips to unique places with distinct culture um, and a little bit more charming, you know, uh, small towns due to the coronavirus as well. So I think you're, we're getting out, we're exploring uh, what we like to call, you know, our backyards and whatnot, um, uh, as we're kind of a little bit more tethered to home. <clears throat> Many families and small groups have had to delay celebrating milestone birthdays, anniversaries, honeymoons, college visits, weddings, and graduations, of course, uh, due to the coronavirus. So now people are starting to hit the road and celebrate their time together a little bit more safely. Um, girlfriend getaways have popped back up on the radar um, and parents are certainly, I think, looking uh, for a little bit of time away after the start of their homeschool year. Um, definitely, we don't know what the future holds with education. And so I think people are, are uh, wanting to get out and have a few experiences before these winter, winter months um, really settle in. <clears throat> 
The pandemic has also led to a significant increase in pet adoptions. Um, and with consumers traveling by car more now than ever, uh, pets get to join in on all that fun. And that means destinations are stepping up to provide even more pet friendly accommodations and services. So this is one that we have seen, we had our on our radar for the last couple of years, you know, with um, pet friendly boutique hotels popping up, um, different restaurants and bars and um, cafes and other things that are geared toward um, your pets coming uh, along for the ride and getting to experience. And so, um, you know, we're seeing that continue to be a trend and I expect that to continue pretty strong in the next couple of years. Um, so this is actually my one-year-old puppy, Margo. She is a pandemic pup, but um, she was in the works far before we were all sort of housebound. And for us, it was perfect timing um, because she has been an absolute lifesaver for my five-year-old who has um, learned a great amount of responsibility over the course of the last several months. <clears throat> So what we're finding is that 42% of our readers um, like to travel with their pets as often as possible. And 93% of our readers say that pets absolutely impact where they decide to stay, like in their overnights when they're traveling. There's a couple of other stats there too, but keep going. I know we're of limited time. Um, so eco enthusiasts will be more driven than ever to respond to the climate crisis after the gains that we've seen during the pandemic. Um, they will tout resorts efforts, you know, to be carbon neutral and will look for opportunities to make their personal travel pr footprint far more sustainable. 12% um, of parents magazine families plan to take a volunteerism or a mission trip in the next couple of years to, you know, um, further make a positive impact with their families and instill that value in their children. And so that's a really important thing, I think, to note, because, again, um, volunteerism efforts. Uh, we've been highlighting them throughout our magazines, our lifestyle magazines and brands, um, again, for the last 18 months, 24 months. Um, but now more than ever, people really want to um, make an impact and do as much as they can to help support eco-conscious travel. Um, that also really uh, influences um, the pack in, pack out mentality and really making sure from our perspective that we're educating the consumer that isn't used to spending their time in the outdoors. And um, so we're layering in different tools and um, editorial layers and, and bits and tricks and things to educate that consumer so that we don't have an influx of people visiting our national parks or other outdoor uh, nature preserves and things um, and not taking care of the space that they're in simply because they just don't know. So um, that's been a really big, important um, part of our storytelling here at Meredith across all brands. And, you know, we're watching the relaunch of traditional travel agents a little bit as well. Um, and they're kind of taking the mentality of travel entrepreneurs and experience experts. So we're also seeing guided travel come out of brands like Nat Geo, Thrillist, REI, um, some of these companies are choosing to respond to the demand for, for you know, trusted, unique insider experiences. And as people emerge from the shutdowns um, earlier this year, we definitely see, saw an uptick in um, travel ideas and aspirations running high. And people were a little bit overwhelmed, I think, and started to look again at these professionals to help them make um, travel plans and make their dreams become a reality, but in a really safe way. Just a couple more here. Um, so skip generation travel. So we'd identified that gramping, I don't know if you guys have heard that term, but gramping was on the rise um, before Corona. And now I think we all know that our grandparents are, uh, grandparents are, are really missing their grandchildren. Uh, we also know that parents, again, are sort of getting a little, little bit um, edgy maybe. And let's just say they've had maybe a little bit enough uh, of their, to the time with their kids and, 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 you know, millions are being forced to homeschool. So um, people are looking for a little bit of reprieve, and we expect that combo will kind of cause a surge in this kind of travel once it's deemed safe for the more vulnerable um, age groups. Oh, one other really important thing to note about this type of travel is that um, they're highly focused on education and um, historical sites, museums, um, those types of trips so that they can not only ex have a great experience with their grandchild, but also um, be educating them about things that are really important to them um, along the way. Um, this is our last trend, and then I'll close with a couple of other thoughts. But um, 
Travel and hospitality companies are realizing, of course, that there is a far underserved demographic among those with um, disabilities or those that are neurodiverse. And a growing number are rolling out ways to make these travelers feel more welcome and get more enjoyment out of, the, our, out of their trips. And this is um, absolutely top of mind for us as storytellers as well, because we want to make sure that we are highlighting um, those uh, really, you know, uh, safe spaces that are offering, you know, quiet spaces for maybe um, or aut autism certified destinations um, for, for kids with um, sensory uh, disorders. And it, it really makes a, an incredible impact on these families um, because to know that you can you can physically access a space or that there is a quiet space for your child um, to reset if needed uh, really makes an impact. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I almost made it all the way through. Okay, so our insights and trend reports are used by our editorial teams, as I mentioned. And um, that helps to drive our content creation among these lifestyle brands. So again, you're thinking Better Homes and Gardens, Travel and Leisure, Southern Living, Martha Stewart, <coughs> Midwest, Midwest Living. Goodness. And the good news is that we're able to leverage that same data and insights to inform our approach for the for the vacation guide um, this year. So we are continuing to present the content to the consumer in ways that will resonate. So with budgets in flux and the impact of COVID very much present, we've collaborated with West Virginia Tourism to create this guide solely um, dependent upon their funding and without advertising. That means that we're dedicating every page in this guide um, to tell stories of West Virginia and tell those through an editorial lens without putting uh, financial pressure on each destination to help fund the effort. So I know that partner support is so critical and important to West Virginia tourism. And we were all really excited about the, the, um, the ability to put together a new guide into market early next spring without applying any additional uh, financial burden or pressure on individual destinations. So, um, I hope you guys will join me in being super excited about being able to put that mark or that guide out. And again, it will be arriving early next spring and it's looking gorgeous. So very excited. All right. Thank you guys so much. Um, it is always an honor to work with you. And I feel very fortunate that we have the number one publisher in the US on our team here at the tourism office. So thank you guys so, so much for all that you do. I just have one quick question for you all, um, and either one of you can answer this, but you know, a lot of our team's focus here in the tourism office is on PR. Um, and for those of you on the West Virginia side, we did a big editorial roundtable last week with the editors from the different Meredith brands, and we were able to share and showcase um, West Virginians from all over the state, their different trades, different areas of the state. It was really a great opportunity. But we know that many of you do this on a regular basis, too. You're pitching stories. You're trying to get um, ideas to editors. So Kylie or Katie, can you give us some insights for what is the best way we should be reaching out to these editorial teams right now? And like, how should we be approaching PR? Is it different now than what we've done in the past? So um, I hope you guys can hear me all good. It looks like my video might be frozen, but either way. Um, so. Uh, yeah, it actually is a little bit different um, just because editors are actually a little bit more captive and at their desks right now, which is incredibly important. So definitely do a follow up. Um, it's also good to kind of grab your cohort, maybe a neighboring um, a neighboring destination or, you know, if you're a winery or brewery or an overnight stay or you've got an outdoor activity, um, brainstorm with your your I guess your cohort and, and see if you guys have a collaborative story that you can tell, because if there's an itinerary that's built in and ready to go um, and, and you've got visual assets kind of at the ready, uh, it's crafted like the hard work is done for the editor. They can at a glance, see if that's the right fit for them. Um, but what I know, what I like to see um, is again, making sure that you have a cohesive uh, package that is narrowed in topic. Don't just send me, you know, the, um, hi, I have a hotel. This is amazing. I have all these things to offer. What does that mean for the reader? 
That is very helpful. And so for those of you who package these types of stories to send them, if you need help from our team, please reach out. Um, I know that many of the editors that they work with um, have loved our photography. We just got an email just a couple of days ago, Southern Living is going to be using one of our photos in their winter magazine. So if you're packaging these stories and you need help with photography, let us know. We have a huge library and are always happy to help. Absolutely. And um, one of the things that I shared with um, the uh, other editors on the call the other day is that Meredith also has uh, an archive because we've been doing this work with you all. And so it's incredibly easy for them to source from our library as well, which makes it all the more um, uh, convenient um, to, to apply coverage. And so, uh, and you know, we've done a really good job of balancing, uh, capturing content in every region um, throughout the state. So there should be a little bit of everything there. Sounds good. And if you guys haven't seen, just in the last week or so, Southern Living's Instagram has posted four or five photos now of beautiful West Virginia fall. So thank you guys so much. We appreciate you being here. Um, appreciate these insights that could really only come from these big brands. So thank you guys. Thank you, Chelsea. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break until 1.40. I know we're a tiny bit behind, but we'll get caught up on the next snack break. So you guys have about nine minutes if you'll join us back at 1.40. Thank you.